Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and today I've gathered 13 stunning French country decor ideas that I hope you will love. This candlestick is also thrifted, but it's seen a couple of different makeovers. So I decided to keep it black. It was already painted black and I'm going to just use some clear wax that has a little drop of white paint in it. I'm going to apply it really generously to the candlestick, making sure I get in all of the little grooves and holes and whatever. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe some of it off and dab some some of it away and the white will stay inside all of the cracks and it just turns out really beautiful. This is just a plastic pot that I had in my stash. I'm using the same rough brush and my DIY chalk paint in white and I'm going to give this a couple of coats. Then I'm going to dress it up a little. Before I add any details to this pot, I'm going to make sure that the paint is going to stay. So I'm adding a layer of matte Mod Podge to seal it in. In my last video, I used these dot stickers from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to give this pot a little bit of detail so it would blend a little bit better with the candlestick. And on the candlestick, there are some sort of bead-like embellishments. So I'm just going to give this pot just on the rim. I'm going to go all the way across on the bottom and then I'm going to do another row on the top. I'm using the same technique that I did for my previous project using these dots. I just stuck them on with the sticky backing that they already have, but then I sealed them in with a good, really good coat of matte Mod Podge, and that will just make sure that they don't pop off. I felt like the pot was a little too white, so I'm taking some of my black chalk paint, which is also a DIY chalk paint. And if you're interested in that recipe, I've got it linked down in my description box. And I'm just gonna give this one good coat all the way around the rim. This candlestick has an indentation on the top. And although my pot looks like it fits, it just is a little bit too big. So I'm adding this wood disc from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue that on and that will raise up the bottom. So once I put hot glue on the disc, the pot will stick to the disc and I'll get a good secure hold. Using tissue paper and Mod Podge again, I'm going to attach this bee that is surrounded by a beautiful frame and on the back I have some French script. Again, all available on my website as free printables. I'm going to go ahead and add this on and then continue adding more of the French script until I have the whole pot covered. I'm going to use the white paint and clear wax mixture again, put it all over the top rim of the pot and then wipe it down and this will just bring everything together and look really beautiful. For this project, I'm using Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint, and that's a paint that you can use on all sorts of surfaces, including fabric. So I'm going to be stenciling some words and designs onto the front or the back of this pillow, depending on how you want to look at it. The back of the pillow right now has a Paris-themed fabric, so I thought it would be only fitting to add some Paris-themed things to the front. Now I'm just doing a bow at the bottom and I'll do a fleur-de-lis on the top. And I'm going to have the whole thing available as a free printable, but I'm also going to have the little bits and pieces available for you if you wanted to design something different yourself. I like using the makeup sponge technique and I'm just loading little bits of paint onto it so I make sure I don't get a lot of bleeding. The smaller bits and pieces, I used some plastic poster board from Michaels and used my Cricut to cut out the stencils. This one I happen to have, but I'm going to be just adjusting it a little bit so I can get the right type of curve that I need. 
Don't forget to hit that notification bell and click all so YouTube will notify you every time I upload something new. Here's my finished design and for the last step I'm going to take some heat resistant Teflon paper. I have a sheet in between the two pieces of fabric so I don't get any bleed through to the back and then the one on the front. I do have these listed in my description box if you need them and I'm just using my Cricut Easy Press to iron it. For this project, I'm using a wooden charger plate that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm going to give it one good coat of my DIY chalk paint and I'm using a chip brush because I want a lot of brush strokes in this paint technique. I'm also going in the same direction. You can see that I'm just going up and down consistently because I want this to have sort of a wood grain feel. Next, I'm going to attach these extra large wooden beads as feet, so this can be a decorative wall piece, but also a tray. I'm gluing these together so there's raw wood on raw wood, which means the glue will hold much better. Once this has dried, I'm also going to give the complete bottom along with the beads a coat of my white chalk paint. I want to give this plate a shiplap look, so I'm just using my ruler and a pencil, and I'm going to just draw three lines. I've already measured them out and put a little dot so I know where to go with my lines. I wanted the shiplap lines to be a little bit distressed, so I'm just using my finger and smudging that pencil all the way across. This really made a big difference in how the piece looks. The technique I'm using today requires me to add water to the projects. So in order for my chalk paint not to bleed or run or come off with the water, I'm giving it a good coat of Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. The process I'm using today is water slide decal paper. I get mine from Hippo and I do have a link for it down in my description box. It is a really inexpensive way to achieve an IOD stamp or transfer look without having to spend all that money on those transfers. With water slide paper, the next step is to immerse it completely in some really nicely warm water. You don't want it hot, but you don't want it to cool. And you need to press everything down. So you can see all of the little edges that I cut out are curling up. And that's why I didn't want to go too detailed with my cutting because I still need to be able to push all of this down into the water. You're going to leave it here for a good 35, 40 to 60 seconds. Once you see that the plastic is starting to lift off from the paper, you're ready to pull it out. When I'm working with larger projects like this, I like to use a spray bottle to mist my item. It just makes it easier to make sure that there's enough water underneath the water slide paper so you don't have a hard time getting it stuck down. So what you do then is just pull off the paper from underneath. Make sure that your design is attached to some part of your project at the top and then gently pull out the paper paper from underneath. Take your time with this because it can wrinkle, but you have some time to move it and get it nice and straight. That's why you want a decent amount of water underneath your project so you can lift it off and then press it down where it needs to be. Then take a soft cloth or a tissue. I like to use a tissue and gently press from the inside out making sure that you're pushing all of those water bubbles out to the edge and the reason you're using either a paper towel or a tissue is that once that water gets to the edge it gets absorbed by the tissue and then you're not left with a water puddle mess. Next, I'm going to freehand the word gather on it. I am looking at a paper above there that has the word that I want in the font style, so I can just duplicate that down on my tray. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to take my Sharpie oil-based marker and fill it in. 
I'm giving it one coat of matte Mod Podge so I can make sure that that transfer is permanent. And I am absolutely in love with this project. For this second project, I'm using this tall terracotta pot. I got a set of two of them at the thrift store and I just love the size and the shape of them. They're just very unique. Anyhow, I'm giving it one rough coat again with my chip brush of my white chalk paint. It doesn't matter if a little bit of the terracotta shows through because I want it to be fairly rustic. Now, if you don't have a Lazy Susan or a turntable like this when you're working on round projects, you are missing out. Make sure you hit those thrift stores or check out anywhere you can find a turntable or a Lazy Susan because it makes the work so much easier when you can spin that project around. To give the pot more of an aged look, I'm just using a brush that already has my mushroom colored paint on it, and I'm just giving it a dry brush, a little heavier in some areas, a little lighter in other areas. It really doesn't matter. Whatever suits you, whatever you like. I found some really pretty olive sprig designs on pixabay.com, and everything that I have found will be available on my website as a free printable so make sure you check that link in my description box as well. This again is a water slide decal so I'm soaking it in water and then I'll apply it to the pot. I printed off some smaller sprigs of the olives and I'm just going to add a couple of them to the lip of the pot as well. For this pot, I decided to make a tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take some of these glass beads that I got from the dollar store a long time ago. They've just been hanging out in my stash. And I'm just gonna put some down at the bottom to give it a little bit of weight. Using my utility knife, I'm just gonna cut the corners off of this block of styrofoam and then wedge it down into the pot. I'm going to be making a tree. So what I took first was just a leftover piece of stem. It is a plastic stem, but it's brown. And I'm taking these little boxwood stems. I've cut the little circle down at the bottom to make it a little bit easier to push them onto the stems. And I'm going to continue filling up all of the stems with this boxwood. Once I had filled up all the little stem pieces, I then took some additional green stems and glued them on just with some hot glue. I wanted to fill it in just a little bit and make it look more full. I pushed the stem into the styrofoam and used a little bit of hot glue to make sure it stayed in place. Now I'm taking some green floral wire and just bending it into a U shape because I want to add some of this moss, but I don't want to glue it down should I ever decide to change my mind about this later on. So I can just take this little bit of wire and push it down into the moss, into the styrofoam, and it will hold it in place really well. If you are enjoying this video and haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that red button. This if canister had a makeover during the Christmas holiday season and I did use a water slide decal on it. These are so easy to remove just using some rough grit sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease and you can get that whole decal off without really harming your painted surface. However, I am going to be repainting this and giving it another makeover. This paint color is called Mushroom and it is a latex paint that I have used in my home, but I have added some talc to make it a chalk paint. I'm going to give it one good coat. That's all I needed to cover up the paint that was there before. I love the IOD crockery stamps and their sprig stamps. I just think they're beautiful. But again, I do not have the budget for those, but I do have the budget for water slide decals.
I'm going to use two of these Dollar Tree houses and make them look like faux wood blocks, like they would be solid. The way I'm going to do that is just trace out a thin piece of cardboard and glue that onto the front of the box to make it look solid. I'm going to glue the cardboard on using my weld bond glue. This is the best glue ever. It sticks to anything. And I wanted this to be nice and flat, so that's why I didn't want to use hot glue. Sometimes the hot glue will make it raised up a little bit and I didn't want to have any gaps. So I'm just going to lay this down, press it down really well, and then give it about 10 minutes to set up with something heavy on top of it. Using my mushroom paint color, I'm going to paint the back of the houses, which is actually the front, so the piece of cardboard, and I'm just going to give it one good coat. I want this to kind of blend in to the whole look of these houses. I put together these really pretty French labels. I'm going to cover the whole front of the house with it just with a glue stick. Then I'm going to take my sandpaper and sand off the edges, putting a little bit more effort onto the paper itself so that can get worn and weathered off a little bit too. Then I used a finer grit sandpaper and went over more on the inside of the paper just to kind of sand it down a little bit more and then give that little bit of grain sack stripes at the top and the bottom a worn and weathered look too. I'm taking a baby wipe with a little bit of my walnut gel stain and I'm just going to wipe it very gently along the edges. It's going to darken up the paper, make it look a little bit more vintage with sort of a sepia kind of color. And then I decided that I would stain the sides of the houses as well, just to make it look a little bit more blended in. I'm really getting into the French country farmhouse look and I love how these signs turned out. DIY number five is using this little thrifted urn that I picked up at the thrift store. It's just resin and it did have a few cracks in it that I just used some hot glue on the inside to hold them in place. But I'm going to be applying a little bit more of this antiquing wax, which is the bare brown wax, and that will camouflage some of the cracks as well. I'm using a chip brush to make sure I get into all of the nooks and crannies, and then I'm going to use a baby wipe to just kind of dab on top, get some of that wax off of the raised edges and make it stay in the nooks and crannies, and then it just looks really old and vintage. <music> I haven't made a topiary in a while, so I decided to use this stick that I got from my mom. Her plant had died, so I told her we'll keep the stick because it'll be great for a topiary. I'm just using a little screwdriver to poke some holes into the styrofoam, and then I'm just going to push the stem into it and then use some hot glue to secure it in place. I'm using up a lot of the greenery that I already have. I've had these vine pieces for a couple of years in my stash and I thought, you know what, I've got too many boxes of greenery floating around. So I wanted to use up what I have and these were perfect. Some of them stood straight up like this first one, but some of them hang really nicely. So I decided to make this sort of a weeping willow kind of topiary. And so what I do is I trim the branches, I figure out how I want it to sit, and then I use hot glue to put it in place. Once it was all built, I looked at it and I decided that I still really didn't like how the bottom was looking. There was still a little bit of that green poking through. So I'm taking a stenciling brush from the Dollar Tree, a little bit of white paint that I'm tapping off the excess, and I'm just going to stipple some of the white on it. And this made it look absolutely beautiful.
I love making little decor items for tiered trays. So when I found this wooden bunny at my local dollar store, I thought it would be perfect. I gave it two coats of white chalk paint on both sides, but on the center portion, I used a gray. I found these rubber stamps at Michael's and they were only like $2 for all four of them. And I'm using some black ink and just putting them all over the bunny to make it look like sort of a French country look. I think this turned out absolutely fabulous. I love the look of these stamps. There's two smaller florals, there's one rose, and then a sunflower. And I am in love with these. So I think you're probably going to see me do a little bit more with these rubber stamps in the future. I found this really pretty green color of ribbon at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to hot glue it all the way around the edges of the rabbit, making sure that it's in the center. And then I'll add a little bow for a necktie underneath his chin. I think he turned out really sweet. Birdhouses are definitely a sure sign of spring. I found this one at my dollar store, so I'm just going to pull off the little perches because I don't need those. So I take some pliers and I just give it a twist and then they usually pop right out. I found some small paper packs at my local dollar store and this one is really pretty green and sort of light green and white and it has a tiny little floral pattern that really looked French country to me. I'm going to use my glue stick and apply this to just the front of the birdhouse and then I'll just paint the rest of the birdhouse with a similar color so it blends in. For this particular birdhouse, I'm only going to use one of the little holes. So I'm going to choose the bottom one and use my craft knife to open up the hole. I didn't have the right green color, so I took a few of the green colors that I have, mixed them together. I also added a little bit of gray to give it more of a sage look. As you can see here, I painted the underside of the roof and the edges green too. I didn't know what I was going to do with the roof at this point, so I just decided to give it a coat of white chalk paint, and then eventually I was hoping that something would come to me, which it did. Since I only covered the front of the birdhouse with that pretty paper, I decided to put some on the roof as well, but I cut it a little smaller so it would not go all the way to the edge. So some of that white could peek through. You'll see me doing that here. So I'm just going to glue it on the top portion of the roof and then fold it over to the other side. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom portion of the roof. I'm going to trim the paper but leave a little bit of an edge so I can give it more of a rustic look in a minute. Then I added some paper to the bottom portion of the roof too. Using my sanding block, I went very carefully against the edges where the paper was hanging over and sanded that and pulled the paper away. It just gave it a really nice rustic look. While I had the sandpaper in hand, I decided to go ahead and rough up all of the corners and edges, bringing out some of that natural wood underneath. I added another little perch. I didn't want to use the original wood, so I just found a little piece of artificial stem from some of my florals, and that worked perfectly. I loved how the green just blended right in with my little birdhouse design. Now comes the fun part, decorating all around the birdhouse. I'm going to add some Spanish moss on the little ledge all the way around it. I'm going to be using my little spatula here to make sure I don't burn my fingers. Anything like moss or ribbons or things like that, you want to make sure that you don't use your fingers. You don't want to burn them because the heat comes through everything really easily. Then I'm going to be adding some little eggs to the sides of the birdhouse and I've got some sweet little florals. These are really fun. They are made of little yarn bits so they look like baby's breath. They're really pretty. I got these in the big box of stuff that my sweet friend Kimberly sent to me a while ago so I thought I would put them to good use. 
for the final touch to my birdhouse. I wanted it to look really nice and rustic. So I cut off a piece of this branch that I've had in my stash. It's really nice and dried out. It was from a tree that we cut down a couple of years ago. So it's had a long time to dry out. So there's no bugs or anything going to be in that. I hot glued it to the bottom of the birdhouse. And then I also hot glued another little piece of square wood so the birdhouse would stand up really well. I really love how this birdhouse turned out. I found this sweet little bird at the thrift store for $1.99 and although he's super cute he just does not fit in with the theme of my decor today. So I'm giving him a couple of coats of the Parisian Grey Home Decor Folk Art Chalk Paint. I really love this paint. It does a super job of covering with one coat. Now because this guy is really slippery I think I did do two coats just to make sure I got full coverage. I had this color called Antique Sky from Martha Stewart and it was just really bright. It was a, a greeny blue kind of color. Just something that I would never use in my crafting. I was always making something new with it. So I decided to just change the whole bottle. I added some more greens and some grays and that's what I'm using here to stipple on the little bird. I'm using this Craft Smart brush that I got at Michaels and it's a really rough brush. It's kind of like a chip brush but it's nice and round so it's really easy to get a nice texture. So I'm just pouncing up and down and I'm not even pouncing in all of the areas. I just want this green to kind of show up every once in a while. Once the green was completely dry, I'm going to do the same thing with white paint. I'm not going to go all over the bird, but I just want it to have some little white speckling just to highlight it a little bit more. And I think he turned out really pretty. If you've been following me on my channel, you probably saw the video where I made over this sort of little buffalo check pattern. I decided that I didn't like it because I did it on an angle and it was a diamond pattern. So I'm going to cover this up with that same sort of sagey green chalk paint. I thought it would be really cute to add a little fabric pocket to the front of this house. So I'm just using some hot glue and some drop cloth and I'm going to create the little square that I want and then leaving the top open of course so it creates the pocket. I'll just hot glue it right onto the house. When you're working with hot glue and fabric, the fabric does get fairly hot. So make sure you're either using something other than your fingers to place it down or do what I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of tapping with my fingers so I don't actually get too much heat onto my fingertips. I printed out this sweet little butterfly and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to apply it to the little pocket. I had to use quite a bit of Mod Podge and really use some pressure with my fingers to hold it in place until the glue had a chance to set onto the fabric. Then I added some more Mod Podge to the top of the butterfly, going over onto the drop cloth fabric just a little bit. This will ensure that the butterfly stays put. To add a little bit more of a French country feel, I'm just going to hot glue a little shoestring lace bow right on top of the butterfly. And then I'm just going to add a few little white lavender florals and I think this turned out really pretty. Stay tuned for the other side of the sign. When I'm making little signs for tiered trays, it just makes sense to have them double-sided. So this is the other side of my little house sign, and it has a gray background. I printed off this design on regular printer paper, and I'm going to cut it just about an eighth of an inch smaller so some of that gray paint peeks out. Using a glue stick is the best way to prevent any bubbles or wrinkles. So I'm going to make sure that I get all of the edges really well to make sure that this is going to stick. To make the paper look a little bit more rustic, I'm using the same Parisian gray chalk paint and a little chip brush just to drag across and make it look like this paper is really nice and old. Then I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper and rough up the edges of the paper to make them look a little bit older too. 
to fill in that sort of open space at the peak of the house. I'm using this little butterfly rubber stamp and I'm going to put it on a little bit of an angle and I'm not pressing down really hard all the way because I want it to look a little faded. For this next little double-sided sign, I'm starting off by putting some glue on the back of one of these artist panels that you can get from the Dollar Tree. This one is the four and a half inch square. Now I'm just going to glue on this little printable that I got and I'm just making sure that I have all of the edges down the way I want them and then I'll just press it in place. Using the sanding block in a downward motion will get rid of all of the excess paper and will also leave it with a nice vintage feel. The other side of these artist panels have a really nice frame. I painted it with white chalk paint and now I'm going to add in this beautiful vintage bunny family printable. All of the printables that are available today in this video will be on my website. That link is down in my description box. I have a section of this little picket fence that I got at Michael's many years ago, and I've been using lots of it in my projects. I'm just going to pull out these little pieces, cut down a couple of them to a smaller size, and then I'm going to hot glue it all along the front of the frame. I glued them onto this little coffee stir stick so they'd be a little bit more steady, and then I painted the stir stick white to match the pickets. I thought it would be really sweet to add some of this little greenery in behind the picket fence, making sure not to cover up any of those sweet little bunnies. Then I took a little bit of a pick from the Dollar Tree and took off some of those little purpley pinky flowers that kind of look like lavender and added those in too. I forgot how much I enjoy making these little decor pieces for tiered trays. I usually sell them as a bundle, but for now I don't have an extra tiered tray, so I'll probably be doing a video on that in the near future. This time for distressing, I used a little bit of burnt umber to keep in with more of that vintage sepia kind of tone, which is more of a brown than a black. To make this look a little bit more French country or shabby chic, I'm going to create a tiny little messy bow that I'm going to glue on top of the sign so you can see it from both sides. I really love how this sign turned out. If you are enjoying the content that I put out on my channel, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Thank you so much for watching. Take care!